Erev Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Tonight, we're looking at two different stories, or at least starting, opening the door to one of the biggest investigations we have ever done here at Israeli News Live. We're going to be going into that door just a little bit as we prepare to unfold uh, some very disturbing information about uh, organized crime, and, uh, and, and of course, the, 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 the paper trail, the money trail, you might say, that leads to that different crime that, that we're going to be speaking about tonight. Before we get into that, though, we're going to be talking a little bit more about these, this ISIS connection, what's going on there. And uh, that's going to be another story. I'm going to go into it even deeper uh, later this week as well. Uh, I know someone had sent me a, a video where... Uh, Brother Paul Begley had spoke about uh, ISIS in my report on that, that Turkey had freed the ISIS militants, uh, but said that we were wrong when it came to the United States helping to facilitate their movement over into Iraq. Uh, well, we're not wrong on that. And uh, although Turkey is playing a major role in this as well, uh, we wanted to set the stage for you tonight, and we will go into a much deeper investigation on this. And I realize there's a lot of um, uh, efforts by people to protect President Trump from any type of uh, news footage that comes out that is not favorable. And, uh, and, and I've got good friends, I really do. I mean, Paul's one of those friends. Uh, 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 John Moore, another one, uh, good friend, that they really hold President Trump up in high regard. There are many Christians that hold the president up in high regards. And our investigation that we began uh, was not an investigation that led directly because of President Trump. It was an investigation that I started uh, because of the work I had done with the government back in the 80s, and I uh, really became more acutely aware as th my involvement in journalism now of just how much criminal activity goes on in politics. Well, that investigation led me down the current road uh, showing how that the political figures are still heavily involved uh, in these types of... Uh, how would you call it, nefarious activities, and it hasn't changed much. Uh, and unfortunately, President Trump's name has been brought up in those circles of the organized crime that is going on to launder money uh, in, 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 all, in, in everything, all the way down to uh, the, the wars in the Middle East. Many of these things, well, in fact, not many of them, they are all connected together. They're, inter, uh, they're intric intricately uh, entwined together and this is why we want to share this information with you so that you can better understand and as we go down this our investigation is not so much to focus on the president of the United States but it's an entire organization of crime uh, that not only the crime that is committed the money laundering the the supply of weapons to these terrorists around the world but also overthrowing of nations, killing of the innocent people that are involved in this. Uh, you know, th there's all kinds of rabbit trails that you can go down. Uh, as the old saying goes, uh, you know, how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? And I think that is something that is used in those, their, their little circles. Uh, they use the uh, Alice in Wonderland narrative uh, when they're talking their lingo. Uh, so we're going to be going into those rabbit holes there, so to speak, and really uncovering a lot of what goes on. And, uh, and so I wanted to start first before I actually begin just a prelude, only a prelude into this world of organized crime, money laundering, uh, drugs and weapons and overthrowing of nations, uh, the rich just getting richer. And, and, and then of course, as I also stated in the broadcast yesterday, uh, I, I personally, when President Trump was elected president, I wasn't fully favorable of him, uh, not so much because of President Trump. I actually was more reserved when it came to Mike Pence. 
Since then, I am less reserved about Mike Pence and, and more concerned about President Trump. And, and I will tell you right now, I have not a single shred of evidence that implicates Mike Pence that, that, that I am aware of thus far. Now, let me, let me just clarify that thus far. I don't seem to uh, have evidence that directly relates Mike Pence into the information I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, okay, so, and, and I say that as of right now. Uh, I have a source I've worked with now for over a year, and uh, there is a lot of minds in the background that have worked on this information. So uh, we're going we're gonna to scratch the surface tonight. I want to first so begin, and, and, and also saying as I go into these things, you know, I, I have friends in the intelligence community all over the world. And... Uh, not because I worked with them directly, but I've just forged relationships uh, because of my own background. And I, I get more information as the time goes on. And in and, and building these relationships, I learn a lot. And, uh, and of course, it's interesting to me because my desire was always for righteousness. I never you know, even back when I was working with the government, I thought it was like cowboys and Indians, you know, but yet we were the good guys, the Russians were the bad guys, and, you know, it was always expressed to me that that's what we were doing. We were taking out Russians. And when President Trump became president, and they kept talking about this Russian collusion, I didn't realize what was really going on. What was the true implication of this Russian collusion? I thought they were just all upset because, okay, someone in his staff met with a Russian and, you know, to me, they're just trying to, you know, work out some kind of deal where we can get back to normal relationships to where we would have a peace with Russia and the United States and Russia, could, we could drop the uh, the, the sanctions against Russia quit crippling their economy and I thought that President Trump and Vladimir Putin would do this and it would calm things down in the Middle East and everything would be wonderful and we don't have to worry about uh, Armageddon so to be, speak or an apocalypse all of a sudden coming upon the planet uh, with nuclear annihilation and I'm not saying that that's what we're headed to at this point either but this was the way I kind of took it when they were trying to say it was Russian collusion. I saw it as President Trump, he was the president-elect, and that this man was actually going to try to bring about peace, and he was fighting an uphill battle. And then, you know, you would hear the things about draining the swamp. Uh, but then we start finding out that, I, I forget if it was Facebook or Google uh, that had done, they had taken, at your expense, they had done a poll years in advance of the keywords that you favored most, you know, such as Hillary for prison. Uh, they found out that was one of the favorite terms that America had. They, they did terms like build a wall, make America great again. At one point, President Trump states these were not his ideas. He was being honest. They weren't. These were ideas that came up from uh, this survey they had done to find out what makes you tick. Building a wall, make America great again. Uh, all these were, were just part of um, uh, a survey that had been done. And I'm, I'm not using the right terminology there, so forgive me for that. Uh, so again, it was all a charade. There was nothing really honest and sincere other than Trump, okay, he's a businessman. He's a businessman that doesn't release his tax records. Uh, he's a businessman that is accused by many women of uh, everything from rape to inappropriate touching and things like that. With you or me, we'd end up in prison if those accusations were out there. Uh, a little different, though, when you're president of the United States. And, and I'm not saying that he's guilty of these things. I don't know. We do know there's enough things circulating out there on the internet, especially um, after one of his friends got arrested for pedophilia uh, for these underage girls down there in Miami. Uh, and of course, he mysteriously dies. Did he really commit suicide? Was it fake? Did they uh, move him somewhere else? Or was he murdered? 
Who knows? That's something else I have found in this investigation as well, just like it was when I worked with the government years ago. Uh, and, 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 I, and maybe I should remind you guys of this as well. I, I, you're, most of you guys are not aware of this because I've only spoke about my time with the CIA in private meetings. And I had spoke with you a little bit, little hints here and there of the things that I was aware of, but I've never given away all the information because there's a lot of crimes that were never solved that I know the answers to. There were a lot of big politician names, including George H.W. Bush, including Senator Graham of Florida and the former governor of Florida. I know a lot of big names that were involved with this organized crime that was going on, money laundering, drugs that were coming into the United States and uh, weapons that were being purchased from the Iranians. Yeah, believe it or not, we had a very good relationship with Iran. You remember the whole Noriega, uh, excuse me, not Noriega, but uh, the Iran-Contra affair. So, and, and I can tell you as well, in fact, one of, a good friend of mine, he sent me some information here, just as a reminder, he, he sent me a, a, a note today, and he said to me in here, he said, you know, following 9-11, Iran did help the United States to invade Afghanistan, providing them with a roadmap regarding what, uh, what was needed to be done military, militarily in a macro and in a, at a micro level, which the U.S. followed and succeeded. They were able to overthrow the Afghans where Russia never could do it before. The Iranians were hopeful the relationships to the U.S. Is go, was going to change as a result of this information they were sharing with them. But then George Bush, as we all know, he declares Iran the axis of evil. And his speech is what changed all of that. Following the invasion of Iraq, Khomeini called for the leaders of the Revolutionary Guard and told them we are next after Iraq unless uh, you turn Iraq into a quagmire that America, can't, uh, that America could get drowned in. That's what he told them they had to do. Strategically to counter the axis of evil thing, Iran came up with the axis of resistance. And they've done that in Iran. They've done it in Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. So, oddly enough, I mean, this very information that I have received, it is an admission that Iran has been involved with the Lebanese, no doubt with Hezbollah, which is a thorn in the side for Israel, and also with Iraq, continuing to go on, and even in Syria. But when I begin to examine the situation in Syria, the very, the, the, the homeland of the mothers of Israel, the matriarchs of the 12 tribes of Israel are all Syrian women. Well, for that matter, Abraham also was a Syrian. In fact, the scripture says, calls him, an, calls him the Syrian. And in fact, if you read in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the book of Genesis there, he also speaks about being a Syrian. And when he comes down to the Jordan River by the Dead Sea and he crosses over into the territory at that time, he called that Egypt because that was part of the greater Egyptian province at that time when Abraham was headed down to Egypt. But at any rate, you know, he shared this information with me and he spoke about how that um, Iran was going to try to break that axis which can also enable Iran to be a future supplier of energy of the European Union. Iran has the biggest proven natural gas reserves in case you didn't know that yourself. The stuff in Syria started and that's why Qatar was, was the initial money behind the Syrian revolt since Assad had rejected Qatarian plans for the export of Qatari gas through the Mediterranean Sea. Now, we already know that. That was, that was the whole big issue. This is all, I guess you could really say this was under uh, President Barack Hussein Obama when this happens. Um, you know, that Bashar al-Assad wasn't going to allow to have the U.S. nor Israel involved in the gas pipeline coming through his country. But instead, it was Iranian gas because they have the largest in the world. And that's something I didn't even know that the Iranian gas was what was going to come through there. Well, 
It doesn't end there though. All right. Then we have here that after the Saudis change of heart following the uh, Aramco attack, America was left with no choice. They had to do something before they lose the Saudis, right? The way they lost Turkey. So all what you see happening in Syria and Turkey, the demonstrations in Lebanon right now, and the demonstrations that are going on to restart in Iraq from this Thursday, by the way, keep that in mind. They're going to start the protest in Iraq on this coming Thursday. So for those of you, and or let me just say like this here, Brother Paul, I know you listen to broadcasts and I, I just, I want you to know I do love you, brother, very much. And I just haven't had a chance to sit down and really seriously talk to you about this latest details. We've talked before and I've shared a lot of things with you because I want you to know what's really going on. And, um, uh, but this coming Thursday, you're going to see restarted in Iraq, okay, a whole new thing coming up. In the last attempt by the U.S. to prevent its downfall in the Middle East by breaking the Iranian axis, in Iraq, their man for this part of their plan is a thug called Mogatada al-Sadar. I want to show you who that is. All right, that's this guy right here. Now, you see him with the Iranian uh, Khomeini, Mukatara al-Sadar. And the question is in this article here by, uh, by the uh, Al-Monitor is what's he doing in Iran? Well, it says that Sadar appeared in a surprising video September 10th. This is, you know, of course, you know, a month ago. Commemorating the third Shiite Imam Hussein Abin Ali, Sadar can be sitting between Iranian Supreme Leader Ali Atollah Ali Khamenei and the Quds Force Commander Qasem Soleimani. All right, so that's what we have right there. He's seen in that picture. Let me just share some things with you. He says, however, he, he is the guy that Iran used to start the troubles in Iraq. That man right there. He's the guy. Iran used him to start the troubles in Iraq after the American invasion. However, he and Iran have been in disagreements over a lot of issues lately. He came on top in the last Iraqi election, but was outmaneuvered by the others who were more aligned with Iran. That's because they're falling out of favor. Remember I said to you recently, this whole deal, what's going on right now, is they're bringing ISIS back into Iraq because they have to overthrow this man here. He went to Iran in the summer and, and was there for two months trying to meet with the authorities. Neither General Soleimani nor President Rouhani agreed to meet with him. At the end of Khomeini agreed to see him. Okay, at the end, Khomeini agreed to see him. That's what we see right here. Whatever happened in that meeting, nobody knows, but judging by his actions, it must not have gone very well. The plan is to destabilize Lebanon, destabilize Iraq, and then break the axis in the middle, so at least by the sea. As far as the U.S. is concerned, there are some plans for Syria as well that we will not know about. Maybe pretty soon, and of course, for Iran itself. So, this is what we have going on in the Middle East. It's a major, major undertaking. Now, it's also the reason why Afghanistan, we still have our troops in Afghanistan to protect the poppy fields, which by the way, it is the Revolutionary Guard. I did a, I did a complete story on that with you guys not too long ago. It is the, it's the Iranian Revolutionary Guard that helps the United States, and oddly enough, Israel has troops also on the border of Afghanistan and Iran right now, and this is where they take the poppy, the money from the poppy fields, and they take and they transport that through Iran, down to Turkey, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard hands it over to the Turkish military, they then take the poppy over to the border there of uh, Eastern Europe, and the poppy is then uh, transported into Europe, sold, Everybody gets their cut along the way. So we talk about attacking Iran here in the United States and it's the axis of evil. And of course we do fight against them. But when it comes to the drug money and the drug 
uh, laundering, uh, getting that money into Europe, well, the United States is very cooperative with the Revolutionary Guard to do that. When it comes to getting into the United States, no big problem. C-130 is transported all the time. We shared that information with you guys so you would know what's really going on in behind the scenes, the cooperations that go on. But anyway, as I reported to you all this week and I was doing it in just little bits and clips and things like that and I really not giving it the true attention that it deserved was the situation that was happening with ISIS. I shared with you already the Israeli government and I and and this is not from my source there I sat down before with former military personnel in Israel a few years back and they shared with me that the the story going in amongst the military ranks of Israel is that ISIS militants have been seen wearing tzitzit. And then we see Russia, I guess when they're not so happy with the United States, they disclose how that our Black Hawk helicopters are transporting ISIS leaders and their families to different locations inside of Syria. <laughs> wow. What a mess, isn't it? And then I got the information that I shared with you guys this morning and at the same time this story on Business Insider um, goes out this morning as well. I don't know if they were before us or after us, whatever it just said 10 hours ago. Trump claimed that the U.S. captured all ISIS fighters but they just launched a major attack on Iraqi oil field. ISIS fighters staged an attack. I think they actually may have come out. I think Reuters came out with this before I did because I think I reported it around noon time. Um, staged an attack on the Iraqi oil field in the wake of a panicked troop uh, drawdown neighboring Syria and Iraq government and refusal to have additional U.S. troops deployed there. Two members of the Iraqi security forces were killed. Three additional members wounded. Reuters reported Monday. So those of you that caught our report earlier today when I got the intel on it, the first ISIL or ISIS attack, as I call it, and it's, uh, it is reborn in the northern Samara, Samara Salah Adin province of Iraq, they attacked and killed Colonel Alami, the chief of the fourth provincial, or excuse me, the chief of the fourth provincial police brigade. Uh, two of his lieutenants and four soldiers. Uh, they were a number of other injured soldiers as well in this attack. And uh, of course, this is what got it all going. So, and then we have to ask ourselves too. Then Trump comes out. Washington Post puts out this story here. Trump says the PKK is worse than ISIS. And the guy that writes it says, I say he's wrong. And I'm a Turk. All right? The PKK is worse than ISIS. Donald Trump states this. No wonder why. I mean, what is it? Is the president now trying to justify why he pulled our troops away from the northern border? Because the PKK is actually worse? Well, you got to keep in mind after all, Turkey is a NATO ally, and of course, they're a big ally, and, and they buy a lot of military equipment from the United States, and you can't have America great again if you're going to bite the hand that's feeding you, right? So you've got to kind of side with Turkey. I guess that's really the way it goes, not to mention we have a military base in Turkey, and the United States can't afford to lose that base, especially after I just read you this report here of what's going on. Why, you know, I Iran is actively involved to try to overthrow what the United States is doing. Now, it's interesting because the source that I have there, he doesn't mention Israel a lot, and he's not against Israel. That's the interesting thing. He's not against Israel at all. Um, but I do know Israel has played a heavy hand even with ISIS as well because it serves the purpose after all the Chinese are working with the Israeli government to put the pipeline in uh, also to build the, uh, the, the, the Haifa port I've shared with you guys before as well all those pipelines that are being uh, placed in there by the Chinese and uh, that's because they fully intend to bring that gas pipeline from the Middle East from all the way over there to the other side when we mentioned earlier uh, Qatar they got to bring that, old, that that gas pipeline in from Qatar they do not want the European Union buying their natural gas from the Iranians but yet Russia is 
done their pipeline as well, and they have tried to include the Turks in it in order to, be, to gain uh, a leverage there and bring that through Iran. So we're going to see, this is the, the whole, whole Middle East is about to explode again. This is what I'm really trying to get down to the bottom of this for you at now. ISIS militants have been freed. And I'm going to really dig up that information for you on this when we go back in history and take a look at some of this so you can see what's going on. But I also said to you at the beginning of the broadcast here, I'm going to touch on two things for you today. I've noticed here today, uh, this came out on BuzzFeed News, the investigation into Rudy Giuliani's associates has widened. Federal investigators have acquired records, many obtained earlier this month by BuzzFeed News, showing a whirlwind of lavish spending by Lev Panaris and Igor Fruman, two key operatives who dug up dirt on Joe Biden for President Trump. Now, before you freak out, and say, oh my God, they're just trying to bring down Trump. I can't believe it. He's, he said he's a Christian. And we believe he's a Christian because why? We got multi-millionaire Christians, or at least professing Christians, that are saying that Donald Trump is a godly man. He's had a changed life. After all, he's got, what, 27 evangelicals that are supporting him? How could he ever do anything wrong? Couldn't. It's impossible. This is just the Democrats. I don't give a flip about Democrat or Republican. Although I have always been a Republican, never changed that status, but I've never been loyal to either one of them because, well, never was a Democrat regardless. Uh, it, it seemed to me that Republicans shared more of the value that I uh, believed from the beginning. But, I realized early on from what I had seen in my own life that behind the scenes is a totally different picture. You have the Israeli lobby that can really run both sides of this fence. And so therefore, and, and we learn a lot of, uh, of this information here uh, from co former Congressman Cynthia McKinney we had her on our, in our interview and how she had exposed the power grip uh, that the Israeli lobby had on politicians in Washington, D.C., both Democrat and Republican. Uh, how that they were having to sign a declaration of standing with Israel. And here they are, you, you know, listen, I'm not against anybody that stands with Israel. The only thing I ask you to do is take a serious look at how you do it. So I want to clarify that in the beginning here as well. Because 2,000 years ago, we had a Roman Pharisaic rule. 2,000 years ago. The Roman Pharisaic rule in Israel 2,000 years ago put Jesus, your Lord, to death on a cross. All right? And the funny thing is, the Pharisees haven't changed one bit. Now they try now to blame this on the Sadducees. They say it was the Sadducees that were in control of the Sanhedrin and they're the ones that put him to death. Not according to the Hebrew Matthew that's sitting over here on my shelf. All right? And that's based on 28 fragment writings of the book of Matthew, all in Hebrew that testify that the Pharisees were on the Sanhedrin and they're the ones that condemned Jesus to death. All right? And I shouldn't say that all right all the time. Forgive me. But when we're dealing with this issue of Pharisees and the Roman, the Roman government that put and sentenced Jesus to death and also persecuted and tracked down his apostles, those that believed his teachings, they were, many of them were tortured uh, found, charged, and killed, and, and, and everything you could possibly imagine were happening to the saints of those days. Even Paul was going all the way to Damascus to hunt them down and bring them back to trial in Israel. So think about how serious this was. So what side do you want to stand on? Because today in Israel, we still are dealing with believers that believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, 
and they're persecuted like you could not even begin to believe. I've got friends there personally. They, they're afraid to speak out because of what would happen to them if they did. Some of them do speak out. But two, the Roman government, whether you want to look at it as America being Roman or the Vatican being Roman in Italy or, 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 or whether you want to consider the Pharisaic, ultra-Orthodox, Hasidic group that is almost now completely in power over the Knesset and that Roman rule from around the world. And of course, you know, as uh, someone sent me, uh, just uh, my wife was showing it to me, advertising the, uh, the gay events for Tel Aviv. Globally, come and visit. The worst third trimester abortion case you could possibly have on the planet, right out of Israel. Netanyahu's administration pulled all this off for you. Now we shared with you, when we first began this investigation a little while back, we also shared with you uh, about different people that, are, that uh, uh, such as uh, Leonid Tiff, uh, the case against him where he was arrested. Uh, he was a Russian that came into the United States, uh, was found guilty of money laundering. Uh, there were connections with him, Lev uh, Lviv, who also is, according to Haaretz, uh, the Israeli billionaire with ties to Jared Kushner and to President Vladimir Putin. Uh, he is a heavy, uh, uh, heavily involved in the Chabad community inside of uh, Russia. He gives more to them than any other person that I'm aware of. He's also involved in financing uh, 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 places inside uh, the West Bank and uh, especially as the Israelis would call it Judea and Samaria. And then we have, uh, of course, some other figures that are coming out right now that is breaking in news, uh, which I'll be getting into in just a little bit. Uh, but on these types of individuals, uh, we spoke about how that also Paul Manafort, which I bring this article up here because it says indicted Giuliani associate Igor Fruman taps Manafort's attorney. That's Paul Manafort's attorney in this latest sting that's going on uh, up around Washington, D.C., also in New York. Individuals that are very close, very closely connected to President Trump that are also connected to Ukraine. So the whole issue about Joe Biden, his son, and their links to what went on in Ukraine, uh, as I said before, I would have to do something that would show you that uh, who's really, who's more involved in Ukraine. I don't doubt that Joe Biden and his son didn't have some play in this as well, uh, but it just so happens that the investigation I've been on now for a year uh, has led me down a different avenue with a lot of other figures. And again, Trump uh, just happened to come up in the mix in this. And uh, it, it's not a very pretty mix either. So, uh, you know, we can go back to 2007 when Paul Manafort, Rick Davis, uh, Rick, G uh, excuse me, uh, I believe, yeah, Rick Gates as well, uh, were involved in, uh, with their, they had a company called Pericles, I believe that's out of London. Uh, and they took with a, sh uh, using a shell company, they, they purchased uh, the um, telecoms communication company in Ukraine. That, according to the source that I had, uh, was used to help put Yanukovych into power as far as the advertisements that was used on this channel there. But it was also used later to orchestrate the Maidan coup. But while Yanukovych was in power, there was a lot of siphling off selling the gas that was coming in through Ukraine illegally on the black market, all kinds of things that I can could speak about on at another time there. But this is where so many of the names that are connected, whether directly or indirectly to President Trump, as well as to uh, President Putin and, uh, and to his, as they, the famous man as they call him, Putin chef, uh, and a bunch of other oligarchs that indirectly were beginning to connect President Trump and President Putin together. And I, I said to you guys from the very beginning, when I first saw President Trump become President of the United States, I didn't know about these things. Uh, in fact, when they talked about uh, Trump and the Russian collusion and, and uh, the Mueller investigation that went after Trump over what was his connections to the Russians, uh, to Putin specifically, and that Putin helped him to get into office, 
I thought this was just a charade and it was just really a joke. And in my opinion, if President Trump's guys were meeting with Russians in the background to try to help forge some kind of peace with Russia so that we could drop these sanctions and end this, uh, these years long uh, uh, sanctions against Russia, bring about some peace in the world in the war in Syria, I thought it was a good idea. I didn't realize just how deep the crime was going and what was really happening. So what I'm going to share with you here uh, is only the tip of the iceberg, all right? It's giving you a little insight on the investigation that we've been doing uh, with a source uh, that we've been working with in many, many, many interviews uh, over the course of this last year. And uh, it has brought me to some completely different thoughts on things that are happening in the world. And it also... It, I got involved in this because of my own time that I spent with the CIA, working with them and learning how things are done. And then later in life, finding out that uh, what I thought was a good thing, I thought we were hunting down Russians. I thought we were getting rid of the bad guys only to find out that in reality, the CIA was involved in corruption. They were involved in, uh, uh, you know, major organized crime networks, uh, bringing drugs into the United States and then uh, money laundering money through political figures, both Democrat and Republican. So this is why I, at this point now, I have very little respect for either parties. But he also says LLCs or incorporations are used to launder dirty money, especially into real estate projects. And sometimes LLCs are simply a deceptive shell company. And an LLC sometimes is a legitimate project or business, but which could also be sometimes used illicitly. If dirty money is moving, being laundered, cleaned via deceptive stealth, in particular with regard to real estate, then it is moving as uh, money bundles being broken into smaller deposits via creating LLCs or incorporations. And with that roadmap, then the FBI can seek the companion's checkbook checking accounts. Uh, so the LLC roadmap we harbor is akin to seeing many checking accounts. And we thereby present multiple movements of stealth money being an organized crime network, transactions seeking by date, spanning over the last 25 years. All right, so this is what we're looking at right now. Uh, and in the near future, I will be sharing with you where you can actually see the information I'm going to speak about now. I, I want to take though with you, and, and just to give you a little look, this is gonna be dealing more with Ukraine but what I want to share with you, because we have some key figures that have popped up in the news here lately, BuzzFeed, for example, investigation into Rudy Giuliani's associates, uh, has widened. And of course, these two men right here that you see pictured on here, uh, Lev Peranis and Igor Fruman, are just two of those characters. And those two characters there are very much connected at the hip to not only Rudy Giuliani, but even President Donald Trump, all right? And this article right on here says, Fed arrests fourth defendant in the Ukraine campaign finance case tied to Giuliani, and that happens to be David Correa, who worked with Rudy Giuliani associate Lev Par uh, Parnas, is now in federal custody and will be arraigned Thursday before the U.S. District Judge uh, J. Paul Oatkin in Manhattan Federal Court, a Justice Department spokesperson has said. So, Let's take a look, and uh, as, I, as I speak about uh, these men here, or you'll hear their names coming up in this, this interesting network of corporations, and we'll talk about things that have happened in the timeline here, uh, uh, and how companies are minted and created right at the time that these things are taking place. So, is it coincidence? Or is it really organized crime network? And like I said, I've got, I'm being sent uh, another 90 pages of documents that is going to back up what I'm going to share with you here, just back up evidence for that. Uh, but we're going to be talking about Dmitry uh, Rybola, Rybolalev, uh, who is a Russian billionaire. Also, uh, he has sold out his company in Russia and has massive, uh, many, many companies here in the United States. All right. Uh, we'll be talking about, uh, uh, well, we've already talked a little bit about Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, Rick Davis. 
uh, and I've spoken about them before as well. Also, Lev, Lev, Lev Lviv, the Israeli billionaire with ties to Jared Kushner and Putin. I won't be getting to so much to Lev Lviv this time around here, but I will tell you that uh, the, these, these financial records, these companies, the ties, they all link together in a very peculiar way. All right, let me back up just a little bit though. I wanna, I'm gonna sh uh, share with you some information. We're gonna go back to 2010 and 2012 and 2014 before I bring you up here to 2019. And then we're gonna be looking specifically because I wanna follow the trail that shows you a very odd and peculiar connection with Ukraine and all these different men and how it goes right back to the White House. Think about it and listen in. All right, on November the 1st of 2010, this is kind of what I showed you in the camera the other day. So I'm sure some people maybe looked at that, wondered about it, stopped the camera, look at it again. Uh, but in uh, November the 1st, 2010 in Tennessee, there was a company minted uh, also in Delaware called Strategic Receivable Management Solutions. All right, now just keep that in mind because also the very next day in Florida, in, in Boca Raton, there was a company called Parnas Holdings LLC that was minted by Lev Parnas. Okay, Lev Parnas. Now, let's just remember who Lev Parnas is. All right, and that's that guy right there, if I'm not mistaken, that's Lev Parnas. Okay, now, Later in the month, excuse me, uh, two years later, in the same month of November, on the 27th, there was a $2 million bank loan. Now, the source I have has a note on here that that is redacted. In other words, he has information that connects all of this, but he doesn't want to reveal it other than directly to the FBI. All right, on the same day of November 27th, 2012, in Tennessee, Strategic Acquisitions Group uh, 2 is minted. And within three days, Strategic Global Assets of Boca, a Lev Panaris, uh, Parnas and David Korea company is also minted. All right. So just follow what we're doing here. I know for many that are listening in, this is probably going to be like, you know, one of those things right over your head, right? And it, it's very tedious information. And maybe some of you out there that really understand this will be like, really get into it. And, and if you do, listen, or do some research with me, share me your thoughts with it, right? All right, now we're gonna fast forward a couple of more years to 2014, okay? And 2014, Trump Miami Resort Management. There's a connection to Lev Parnas with Trump Miami Resort Management that is minted in New York on August the 28th of 2014. On the same exact day, August 28th of 2014 in Florida, California Partnership, West Palm Beach is minted by David P. Correa. One of the very guys that just got indicted, one of Giuliani's friends, right? And then the very next day, in Delaware, Mark's Jupiter is minted by Donald Trump. Why are these guys all minting corporations right here at the exact same time frame? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Now, it's gonna it's okay. really kind of weird how this works out. If you remember back in April the 9th, 2018, the FBI does a search warrant of Michael Cohen's, and of course President Trump is really bent out of shape about that. All right. Now, I want you to hold this because not only are, are, do we find that there are very, what seems to be coincidences, but it can be coincidences when it's over and over and over and over, but we find these companies that are minted uh, even sometimes the same dates a year later, we get identical mintings all over again. So right after Trump is uh, publicly criticizing the FBI for its investigation, uh, you know, the collection of evidence of Michael Cohen, his attorney, the very next day, Blue Sky Entertainment is minted. Also, Nova Marketing is minted, uh, and that's in Florida. 
uh, Miami Beach, actually. Uh, there is a question whether or not it has any relation to Columbus Nova. And that company is also on the same block as Trump Tower, by the way. Even though it's minted in Florida, it's on the same block as Trump Tower. And there is uh, a note that they believe that this is connected to Victor Vic, uh, Vixelberg, which they also note is tied at the hip with Trump. Now, these are just kind of minor ones right here. It's going to get really interesting when we get into 2019. All right. I just, but I wanted to share some of these with you. All right. Also, the very next day on April the 11th of 2018, there is a DSHAZ LLC that is minted in Pin, uh, Pincrest, Florida by John A. Miller. Now, those of you who know anything about John A. Miller, uh, John A. Miller, this is where we have all these little articles in here about Donald Trump masquerades as a publicist to brag about himself, according to the Washington Post. Uh, and, you know, they're accusing Donald Trump of using this as an alias, right? Well, just so happens that John Miller, though, does on the April the 11th, 2018, mints a company. There's, by the way, there is many of these companies minted by this alias John A. Miller guy. It follows a very interesting trail if you look over this whole span of time that this uh, information is done. But then also on the same day, Strategic Solutions and Services in Memphis, Tennessee is minted. And Hugo Partners One in Destin, Florida, a New Orleans company, is minted. Now, oddly enough, if you go the very next year, April of 2019, on the same day, on uh, the 10th of, a, uh, of April, uh, and of course the day after we know that uh, the John A. Miller does this one really strange uh, LLC minting, a year later, John A. Miller is at it again. This time he's minting a company called Royston Thomas Holdings LLC in St. Pete, Florida. And then the same day, Global Energy Partners is minted also. And if I'm not mistaken, attributed to John Miller. Now that's just to kind of set a little bit of the stage. Now we're going to really get into the Ukraine side of these things. All right. I just wanted to set a stage for you there. Now, if we go back just a few months ago, in July, on July the 18th of 2019, approximately around that date right there, Trump puts a hold on Congress, the Congress approved military aid to, you, to Ukraine. He puts a hold on that money. It's already been approved by Congress, it's ready to go, but he puts a hold on it, right around that time frame, okay? And during that, um, I have to get my right pages here. Give me one second. Um, when that happens there, same time he puts a hold on that, there is a company that's minted in Tennessee called Strategic Renovation in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And that company is connected to Strategic Global Assets of Boca Raton, Florida, Alev Parnas and David Correa, company. And again, if you remember, David Korea, uh, also uh, Lev Parnas, and, uh, and, and uh, one other guy here, all these guys connected to Giuliani and also connected to Trump. Um, some of the articles that are just coming out about these guys now being arrested, etc., with ties to Ukraine, taken into custody. All right, so keep that in mind. They're connected right there. All right, that's July 18th of 2019, right after Trump was withholding that this money, okay? So, on the 19th, the, the very next day, there is a company minted called Paradise at Blue Sky LLC. It's done in Delaware, and that company is actually tied to Dmitry Rybolalev, the Russian billionaire. Isn't it kind of strange how 
Dmitry Rabolilev mints a company right, right at the time that President Trump is putting a hold on the money that funds to Ukraine. And again, it may seem like, oh, what's the, no big deal, it's just a coincidence. Way too many coincidences. All right? And we also have on July the 25th of 2019, Trump gives a call to the Ukrainian president, Zelensky, encourages him to investigate uh, Joe Biden and his son. Uh, and I know that people say, well, that's not impeachable offense, and I'm not here to say that it is. Really, to me, it doesn't make any difference. Because I don't doubt for a moment that Biden and his son also are involved in this kind of mess as well in Ukraine. As we had done a broadcast, I don't know, uh, close to a year ago on this subject, we showed you back then how that Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, and Rick Davis were also involved in siphoning off millions of dollars of money from Ukraine and this whole venture with the Russians, okay, with the Russian oligarchs. And of course, they stiff some of those oligarchs that are not very happy with those guys either. Uh, but as we go on, though, we continue to look at what's going on here. Three days later, Giuliani, on July the 28th of 2019, goes to Madrid, Spain, and meets with Zelensky. That seems kind of weird, doesn't it? Then on the 31st of July, President Trump calls President Putin. Huh, makes you wonder what they really talked about, right? Well, the weird thing is, is the very same day that Trump has that phone call with President Putin on July 31st of 2019, Global Energy Producers is being minted in Delaware, and Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman Giuliani clients seem to have a connection to that. So GDG, Global Development Groups LLC, there is a partial timeline on that coming up, which I won't, I won't be bringing that out today. But we jump forward a couple of months, we come into September the 11th of 2019. Oh, I'm sorry, before I go into that, not, not, not yet, not so quick. Um, on September the 1st of 2019, Mike Pence has a meeting in Warsaw with the representative of the Ukrainian President Zelensky. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is also in Warsaw at that time. On the 2nd of September 2019, we end up getting this Lev Parnas company and David Correa company that ends up being minted in Orlando, Florida called Protect Services. A day later, we have in California Red Phoenix Corp, which is Red Phoenix Consulting in Santa Ana, also being minted. Now, that may not make a whole lot of sense to you guys right now because there's a lot more documentation when it comes to Red Phoenix that connects a lot more money trails that I'm not even speaking about by right now. But I just wanted to throw that one in there so you have an idea of where we're headed with all this. All right, so now, then we, we take and on September the 11th, Trump, lifts the hold on the $391 in military aid to Ukraine. And right after he lifts that hold, the very next day in Delaware, Paradise at Blue Sky LLC is minted, and once again, Dmitry Rybolilev, the guy you see on your screen behind me there, is minting another company that's connected to him. You see, guys, what makes all this so strange, and this is, like I said, this is just a small fragment of information, is that you, there's just, you can't, this can't just be coincidences that every time the president 
is having certain meetings that his associates directly and indirectly all of a sudden all start minting a bunch of companies as the source that brought this to my attention said it's like looking at a checkbook it's like looking at someone's checkbook and seeing what they do and this is what the FBI does they investigate these things where does the money go that's exactly what we're dealing with and that's just a little bit on Ukraine and, and like I said I'm not even getting into the depths of all this information it is volumes and volumes and volumes of information a lot of this is even well over my own head but the money trails are endless and the amount of hours and research I've done in these money trails and connecting the people and not only I'd right there all I did was I just read to you the company names the involvements the time frames the things that Trump did when I really lay this out again I'll only do a small portion of this information but what I'll do then I'll go deeper into it I'll show you the connections I'll show you the companies like tonight what I did so you could understand who we were talking about I show you some of the images of some of these people how they're being arrested and things like that and that's the only reason I decided to go ahead and bring some of the information out tonight because I see some of these arrests that are being made uh, of people that are connected uh, to President Trump and yet I know where this is all going so I wanted to share some of this with you so when we say these things we don't just say it to say it and and again hey I, I, I would have wished President Trump would have been the best president ever I really do that would have been my greatest desire is to see this nation come back but the money laundering and the organized crime goes far deeper than you could ever imagine and once we get into the other uh, parts of this whether I don't know if we're going to Khashoggi or not but there's a major money trail on Khashoggi as well um, I know the individuals that have worked on this information their desire is to see that organized crime is finally prosecuted whether or not that'll ever happen or not I highly doubt it I really doubt it whether or not this will even affect President Trump I highly doubt it even though the evidence is overwhelming and the documents that I'll be sharing with you this coming week is mega overwhelming but unfortunately the blinders are on people's eyes so much and it has almost become to a cult-like status and everybody thinks that people are just out to get Trump you know it's just evil that's all there is to it if the things if we did the things that we see that are going on in this administration we'd be in jail the next day um, let alone when they accuse uh, well, I won't even go into that right now. Listen, if you want to stand with truth, stand with us. If, you, if you're interested in having your ears tickled, you already know where to go. Okay? There's enough people out there that will tickle your ears. We try to just really tell people what's the truth here. And we don't, we don't play games about it. We just tell it like it is. If that's what you're interested in is knowing the truth, stand with us, support the work we do, because, believe me, when, when you stand for what the truth is, there's not many people interested in supporting truth. They will flood money to the lies. And we do thank you for your kindness in standing with us. God bless you. Thank you for watching tonight. Our website is IsraeliNewsLive.org. Also, our mailing address uh, normally appears right here on the bottom of the screen for you if you want to click there. I don't seem to have it anywhere on the computer here, but anyway. Thank